again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Focus Vandalia. My name is Rich Hopkins. I'm the communications manager for the city. And on today's program, we've got some exciting news on the economic development front, as there are some companies looking to locate right here in Vandalia. One of them has already signed on the dotted line. We're also going to check in with our Parks and Recreation Department, let you know about some exciting programs that are on the schedule as we head into the December holiday season. But our first stop today is here at the Public Works Garage, where as you can see behind me, we've got bins that are full of salt in anticipation of the salt and snow season ahead of us. But as we're about to find out, this salt may be all we get all winter long. Yep, a quick glance at the salt storage bins at our Public Works Garage will tell you that we have right around 100 tons of salt on hand, ready to attack that first snow and ice of the season but that is not enough salt that we typically use in the winter. And with the regional shortage of salt, um, there may be a chance we don't get any more salt this year. Public Service Director Rob Cron says the problem this winter really stems from that crazy winter we had last year. The main reason for the shortage this year is the extreme winter we had last year. Um, everyone's supplies were depleted. The mines are still trying to catch up from last year and everybody is refilling their bins, which we did in the spring. But um, right now they're still behind trying to catch up and they can't guarantee there's gonna be any more salt available for us to purchase this year. And we're not alone. Communities across the region are dealing with this very same salt shortage. The city actually purchases our salt through a cooperative of over 100 different communities, townships, counties as well, and we're all in the same boat. Um, the total bids came in this year and they're only gonna supply about 25% of the total amount of salt that was requested by the cities. And while there's a small chance that salt may become available later this year, there's no guarantee. Kron says the city has a pretty simple game plan to make sure the salt he has on hand will last. Try to conserve as much salt as we can while still trying to make our roads as safe as possible. We do have purchased some new equipment this year um, with new controls that will help us monitor our salt usages and conserve it as well. So that's going to be one thing. We're going to cut back on the amount of salt we use. We're also going to be adding a chemical to our salt as we put it down this year, which will let us um, use less salt with still the same effectiveness. Um, and it also works in a lower temperature as well. A big part of the conservation plan is dramatically reducing the number of streets that receive salt. We have to keep the main thoroughfares, the you know, US 40, Dixie Drive open, um, but some of the residential streets are gonna see a lot less attention than they have in the past. Another way the city will try to conserve the salt is by upgrading the equipment they use to spread that stuff around. We've purchased four new dump trucks this year to help with our snow and ice operations um, to go with two other ones. So we have a total of six trucks out on the roads that will be salting and that, that covers about 80 miles of roadway within the city. So with a nasty winter being predicted and very little salt to go around, Kron says it's going to be very important for drivers to take it slow. One thing we're going to ask is that our residents have patience when we get to the streets. Sometimes it's better to have some snow on the street to help you get some traction than to actually plow it off and not be able to salt it and they'll actually make it slicker. And while we're short on salt supplies, we're finding that there's no shortage of companies interested in making Vandalia a part of their future. Assistant City Manager Greg Shackelford says his office is dealing with several companies at varying stages of the decision process, all looking hard at making a move to town. One of those companies is trying to keep its identity on the QT right now, so it's operating under the code name Project Lakota. They had a due diligence period where they could uh, go out to the site and perform environmental um, soil boring samples, uh, those, those types of things. Uh, where it would be something that they'd want to have done before perhaps they would uh, execute a closing uh, for the land. The company is sitting on an option to purchase the land at Stone Quarry Crossings, but needs a little more time to crunch the numbers. All we really did was we took the, the expiration uh, on that was in early October, and we extended that out to December 8th. Project Lakota would bring roughly 80 jobs upon completion with plans to add 20 or 30 more jobs in the next three years. It would build a structure with close to 300,000 square feet. Another company looking to locate in Vandalia is using the code name Project Horse. Uh, the horse uh, project is one that we've really been uh, cultivating over the last few months and uh, we, we finally got uh, to a negotiated contract which is a very good sign. Um, I think we're, we're in the hunt with 
uh, competition from another state uh, that I'm not going to disclose uh, at the request of the, of the potential client. They, they want to keep it confidential for now. Um, but it would be another regional company uh, that would be relocating to Vandalia. And similar to Lakota numbers, they're talking a little over 80 jobs initially and uh, the creation of another 25 in a three-year period. Finally, on the economic development front, a Troy company has already decided they'll be moving operations to Vandalia. There's a company that was located in Troy uh, called One Call Now that, um, from what I understand, it's already been in the Dayton Daily News, the announcement that they executed a lease agreement for uh, the Sand Lake building, which is over on the Poe Connector, uh, and they're taking the space that Progressive Insurance was in. Uh, Progressive had uh, built a new facility on North Dixie in, in Butler Township. Uh, it's about four, 13, 14,000 square feet. They're, uh, I think, right out of the, right out of the gate. There are about 60 employees that would uh, that would come on board. I think they're trying to get this completed uh, maybe by the start of 2015. Shackelford says one call now will be a great fit in the Vandalia business community. It's a really nice win for us. We're excited about it, um, and you know, it's one of those where you hate to rob from another area, but. This, is, this was really driven by a great job by the broker and, and putting the deal together and the company's need for uh, additional workers, um, which could grow up to near 100 in, in, in about three year periods. Our last stop today is at the Vandalia Recreation Center where folks are gearing up for the holiday season, which is all about tradition. One Vandalia tradition that will be continued this year is the great turkey shoot. A turkey shoot is a family fun basketball competition for about all ages um, where you get a family member whether it be mom dad aunt uncle come out on saturday november 22nd at 10 a.m uh, shoot a couple free throws have a good time win with the door prize and maybe possibly win a gift certificate to get a turkey for Thanksgiving. Recreation Supervisor Alicia McCracken says the format for the turkey shoot is simple. A two member team of an adult and a child and each of them throw free throws. We combine the scores. Even if you miss the basket completely, you still get a point. So um, you don't have to be Michael Jordan or anything. Come out and just have a good time for the morning. On top of scoring points, the goal of organizers is for just about everyone to score a door prize. We want every child and participant to leave with a door prize, so we're raffling it off like crazy during the whole event. McCracken says she's also busy these days putting the finishing touches on the next recreation guide, which is due out before the end of the year. The Parks and Rec Department is going crazy with brainstorming and programming, and we've got a lot of cool programs um, that'll roll out in our next program guide um, that'll be here before we know it. Uh, and registration for those programs will begin at the end of December. So keep an eye on it out in the mailboxes a few weeks before that. If you have high school or college kids at home, you may want to direct their attention to the rec guides entry on lifeguard training. Aquatic Supervisor Steve Trick says there are classes available this fall and winter they can get you lined up for a great summer job. The prerequisite is that they have to be 14 years of age or older, so to be in the class. Uh, but yes, uh, 16, 18, 20, I mean, we have college kids, we have high school kids that we've hired. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's a good way to get uh, summer employment, um, year-round pools like uh, the rec center here. Uh, we need guards, particularly after school and weekends, so it's a good time to get some extra money that way too. With Thanksgiving right around the corner, fitness supervisor Sarah Levy is telling folks about a Thanksgiving Day event that could have you eating your turkey feast guilt-free. Um, if anyone is interested in taking a fitness class on Thanksgiving Day before they go home to eat their meals, um, we are going to have Cardio Physique with Sue Marvin, and that's going to be from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. And that's uh, Cardio Physique, and that's for anyone. It's a drop-in fitness class. One big question Levy hears in the weeks leading up to Turkey Day is whether or not the center will even be open. And the answer to that question is yes. So Thanksgiving Day, we have special holiday hours. 
The center is only open from 7 a.m. to noon, which includes only the track, the gymnasium, and the fitness center. You can also expect special hours of operation as we head into Christmas and New Year's. We have more special holiday hours for the center. On Christmas Eve, we close early at 6 p.m. And then on Christmas Day, we are closed the entire day. There will be no activities going on Christmas Day. And then the following week on New Year's Eve, we will be closing early again at 6 p.m. And then New Year's Day, we will be closed the entire day yet again. With the holiday season comes time off from school and the inevitable complaint, there's nothing to do. A day before Thanksgiving, we're having our Thanksgiving camp. It's for children 6 to 12. Um, they get to come and climb the wall, swim, and we're also going to go to a movie to see Penguins of Madagascar. And that's all included in the price. Recreation Supervisor Brittany Lewis says the day-long camp gives kids something to do and gives their folks the opportunity to wrap up some shopping. We'd love to get parents out, you know, that want to go shopping the day before Thanksgiving or get their last-minute cooking done for Thanksgiving the next day. And finally today, we have the scoop on the city's annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Mark your calendars. It's planned for Sunday, December the 7th at 6 p.m. The Christmas tree lighting will be Sunday, December 7th at 6 p.m. We'll have crafts for the kids. Santa Claus will be here, cookies and hot chocolate. Lewis says the goal is to get you in the holiday spirit. When you show up, we'll give you a ticket and you can take that to the food um, trailer and you will get a cookie and hot chocolate to keep you warm, get you in the Christmas spirit and see Santa Claus. Talk about an action packed evening on top of the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree lighting on top of the hot chocolate and the cookies. We're also going to have music to get you in the holiday spirit. We're going to have on stage the winners of this summer's Vandalia's Got Talent competition and they'll be singing Christmas carols to get you ready for the big event. That's going to do it for this edition of Focus Vandalia. I'm Rich Hopkins. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.